Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Whenever I go to a convention, I come back with new minis. Normally, most of these would end up in my pile of shame, but not today. Today, I'm gonna show you my sweet haul of minis, and we're gonna get them painted. No exceptions, they're all getting painted. First up is the convention croc from Crocodile Games. This croc is what I look like at conventions. Walking around with some junk food and a bag of loot. Conventions are great. You get to see old friends, meet new ones, and play games. They're also a chance to go shopping and to find some new minis. The vendor halls are full of opportunity. I try to collect whatever free samples are available, and I buy a few things that are small enough to cram into my luggage. Now these days, more and more people are recognizing me from the YouTube channel, and that has resulted in me accumulating a wider variety of tidbits. You'll see. Some of the things in my haul are quite nice, and some of them are quite strange. You'll see. You will see. The Crocodiles are one of the factions in War Gods of Egyptus, and the Convention Croc is a fun mascot. This croc is pretty cool. There he is with his bag of goodies. Now, let's get back to my bag of goodies. Next up, three Battletech Battle Mechs. Battletech sells blind boxes where you get a random mech. I didn't buy these, but my friends did. These three were gifts from Casey and CJ who already had too many mechs. These are made from durable soft plastic, which is nice. But they have some mold lines that are pretty hard to remove, and that is less nice. We'll give these a decent paint job, but I want to go quick and not sweat the imperfections too much. I primed them, and then used my airbrush to cover them with a few shades of red and orange. Nothing too fancy. After the base coat, it was time to dry brush them with bright orange. One of my purchases from Adepticon was this set of brushes from Artis Opus. These are pretty expensive, so it was a psychological challenge to put paint on them for the first time. I carefully dipped the brush in paint, I wiped most of the paint on my dry palette, and I got to work. All of the minis, all of the brushes, and all of the paints from my haul are getting put to use. The orange brightened things up and highlighted a lot of those edges. Next, I added some variety. I painted the guns, the joints, and a lot of the other bits with a dark gray color. And here we are, fresh, clean, and ready for the fun step. It's time for dark enamel wash. I put this oil wash all over everything. This adds definition to all of the gaps between armor panels, and it also adds a layer of grime. Battle tech, battle mech, battle grease. I let that dry for a bit, and then later in the day I used some paint thinner to wipe off some of the grime. This is a fun trick with oil washes. The paint thinner usually won't harm the water-soluble paints underneath, but it'll loosen up the oil wash and you can clean up as much of it as you want. This brings some brightness back to the top surfaces and increases the overall contrast of the model. And there we go. Base coat, dry brush, and oil wash. Now we've got some perfectly respectable battle mechs. Most importantly, we kept them out of the pile of shame. The next thing in my bag is a real treat. This is the Wretched Hive. It's the Iguan faction for Relic Blade. Relic Blade is a cute little indie game. Sean Sutter does the 2D art for the books and the cards, and he does the 3D art on the models. There's a unified artistic vision across the whole line, and I love it. For now, the game is still small enough that Sean even does a custom doodle in every rule book that he sells. This is very cool. This expansion set came with a basilisk and three iguans, and I already had another iguan that I'll paint up at the same time. I based them with sand and tiny rocks. Then, I gave them a black and white zenithal prime. I want these to be fun and cartoony. I'm using a bright green speed paint for grass, broken up a bit with some brown speed paint for mud, and grey stones. Of course iguans can be any color that we want, but I'll be using this art as inspiration. Burnt orange for the scales, and a sick yellow green for the cloth. Knowing two of the main colors is a fine start to any paint scheme. I picked out two shades of Pro Acryl, and I got to work. So Relic Blade is a skirmish game. Each player normally has somewhere around four characters, plus a few cards for special equipment. 
When you're putting together a team, you choose whether you want to be the good guys, the advocates, or the bad guys, the adversaries. The Wretched Hive are bad guys. I could make an entire skirmish team with Iguans, or I could mix and match an adversary team with Battle Pigs, Fishmen, the Undead, Iguans, and beyond. Once I had the orange and the green, I picked some other colors that I thought would jive, and I finished up the base coat. I gave the models a wash of light tone from the army painter. When that was dry, I used some black magic ink to blackline the borders between some of the color blocks. From here on out, it's just a matter of adding a few highlights and picking out a few details. Oh, and we can't forget about the basilisk. I used some of the same colors on him so that he fits with the rest of the team. I painted him green, and then gave him some orange spots. I gave him a wash of military shader, and then I painted his eyes and his claws. And there we go. Of everything that I got in my convention hall this year, these Relic Blade minis are probably the most likely to get some playtime on the tabletop, so I'm glad that we got them painted right away. Looking good, Iguans. Looking good. What's next? Oho! We have an off-brand, not Twi'lek, not Jedi from War Scenery. War Scenery is an STL sculpting company, but they had a booth at the convention, and they were showing off prints of some of their minis and some of their terrain. They have some totally not Star Wars terrain, and some nice squads of totally not Rebel Alliance troopers. They gave me this lady as a free sample. Lots of companies give free samples, but I'm pretty sure that I got this one because I'm a YouTuber. But hey, she's part of my haul, and we're painting her. I was trying to pick out a scheme, and I decided to use some paints that I bought at the convention. I bought three bottles of paint from Huge Miniatures, and I packed them in my toiletry bag for the flight home. This is a small paint brand that just hit their five-year anniversary. In addition to these acrylic paints, they sell fluorescent paints, basing materials, and some other stuff. This is my first time trying stuff from Huge Miniatures. We're going blue lightsaber, teal skin, and orange cloth. These paints are much thicker than the other paints that I've been using recently. You definitely want to use a wet palette and thin them down first. I'm still getting used to this consistency, but I really like the colors. One minor point is that after a full day in my wet palette, the paint was still usable. This is not the case for most of the other paints that I use. Anyway, I got some more colors on this Not Jedi, and I think she looks nice. The three colors that I happened to buy from Huge Miniatures ended up being a great combo, and I'm really happy with how this is turning out. She's a very pretty lady wearing some very skimpy armor, so uh, maybe we should move along here. This is a family-friendly channel. Move along. Move along. Next up in my convention hall is... Uh oh. Oh no. This is an exotic dancing Jawa. Wait, not Jawa. Exotic Dancing Sand Scavenger. Uh oh, this, this episode is coming off the rails. This is a family friendly channel, gosh dang it. We gotta fast forward through this one. <sighs> I painted the stripper shoes with Adepticolor Red from Turbo Dork. Greg from Turbo Dork gave me this bottle at the convention. It's a great color for stripper shoes. Thanks, Turbo Dork. Thanks for supporting this video. This model is an inside joke on the Monster Den Minis channel, and he gave me a copy of it. This was sculpted by Hack and Slash Minis. The base for this mini is a stage with spotlights, and it's honestly one of my favorite 3D printed bases that I've ever seen. A base is kind of like a stage for your minis, and yeah, this works. A stage with lights and a stormtrooper hat to throw some credits in. With the placements of those spotlights, this model is actually a neat opportunity to practice some object source lighting. But, uh, yeah, we gotta wrap this one up. Here is the Sand Scavenger Exotic Dancer. Get the file for yourself on MyMiniFactory.com. Okay, what's next? This here is a model from Omicron Protocol by Dead Alive Games. This is a squad-sized game that's played on a hex board, and the setting is called Intra-Apocalypse so I guess the world is just starting to fall apart. A lot of the characters are humans, and there are also animals that have busted out of the zoo and, and stuff like that. I don't actually know a lot about this game, but Sergio, who was volunteering at the booth, really liked it, and the minis seem pretty nice. I thought this was also a good opportunity to pull out a set of resin basing elements from Blacksite Studio. 
This set is all about modern streets. I think this bag of trash looks appropriate. This character is pretty much just a dude from our world. Most of the minis that I paint are from sci-fi and fantasy settings, so I don't really know how to make him look cool. I gave him a basic paint job, and I think he's ready for the table. He's got a knife and a crossbow, but other than that, he seems a bit more family friendly than the exotic sand scavengers. This is an excellent change of pace to settle the nerves a bit. Let's call him done and keep on trucking. Alright, last but not least, check out these models from Warzone Eternal. This is a small scale war game with cyberpunk themes. I used my airbrush to prime them and to paint the armor solid green. I'll use my paintbrush later to add the shading and highlighting. I did give the energy swords a quick red to orange transition. After I re-established black on the bases, it was time to get going with my paintbrush. My understanding is that Warzone Eternal is about militarized megacorporations fighting it out. Also, I think some of the factions are undead, or something. The factions have a variety of high-tech armor and weapons. These models that I'm painting are from the Cybertronic Megacorp. This is an upcoming game, and I think there's a Kickstarter wrapping up right around the time of this video. Eventually the minis will be SEOcast, but the guys at the convention booth slipped me a little baggie of 3D printed prototypes. Here we are with most of the secondary colors blocked in. Next, I lined everything with black magic ink. I love this technique. It's time consuming, but I find it relaxing, and I really like the end result. I spent a couple of happy hours black lining with ink. Next up, highlighting. I picked a shade of yellow-green, and I edge-highlighted everything. I went hard with this step. The yellow-green was a distinctly different color from the base coat, and I used thick, chunky lines. This is a bold look, but I think it's neat. Outlining all of the armor plates is time-consuming, but I enjoy it. The bases started as black primer, and then I dry-brushed them with light gray. After the black and white undercoat, I added some transparent brown and orange. The bases were a combination of texture paste, little chunks of cork for concrete, and bits of 3D printing supports as rusty metal. With the grays, the browns, and the orange, everything looks ruined and rusty and miserable. A perfect dystopian battleground. I went back and painted in some more details, and yeah, there we go. This was a fun little squad. I like these Warzone Eternal Cybertronic dudes. This video was an experiment for me. Seven mini paint jobs, and no emphasis on any particular style or technique. As the channel has grown, I've been making bigger and crazier videos. That's cool, but a side effect is that I've made fewer videos featuring straightforward paint jobs like these ones. I think I've convinced myself that I should always be trying to show you something that you've never seen before. For example, a few months ago I filmed a battle report with a professional cinema team. The professional edit on that is coming, and it'll be out soon. Now, I've also been doing factory tours, giant batch painting projects, and other super secret stuff. You'll see. The point is, I keep looking for bigger and bigger ideas. When I consider making a video about a single model or a single squad, I get worried that I won't have enough useful tidbits to share. I want my videos to always be worth your time. I don't know if any of the seven paint jobs from this video would really be worthwhile as their own Goobertown Hobbies video. But if we combine them all, yeah, I think there's some neat stuff in here. I think at one time or another, most of us have had trouble painting because we're worried that we're not good enough or that our idea for a paint job isn't special enough. The good news is that when we ignore that little voice and just put some paint on our brush, the fun comes right back. Moving paint around is a form of zen, and this hobby is a beautiful thing. None of these paint jobs are anything profound, but I think they look nice, and they were all pretty enjoyable. This is more forward progress on my pile of shame than I've made in a while, and that feels good too. Hopefully you had fun watching, and maybe you learned something new. I'm always going to be looking for those big video opportunities, but I also want to make these straightforward painting videos that are good clean fun. If a model isn't quite worth its own video, I can always bundle it into a variety show. Now on that note, I have a bit of a confession. 
I got way more than seven different minis at conventions this year. Way more. The good news is that I have a solid head start on the next batch of minis. Well, that's about it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.